So I like to remind people that we live in revolutionary times. You know, it is phenomenal what's happened uh, since the mid-90s, and it is uh, absolutely incomprehensible what's happened since the advent of smartphones, which, after all, is only about eight years. It's like nothing. My kids were in elementary school when it started, now they're in high school. It is just not that long. Uh, and I firmly believe that it'll be 2050, and we'll all be reading about this in the history books. And somewhere in a history book, they'll talk about this incredible area between San Jose and San Francisco, California, and how it was this amazing moment in time when you could drive up one of two freeways and be within five miles of every multi-billion dollar company that was making a difference in the world at that moment in time. It is extraordinary to be able to drive past Adobe, Google, Yahoo, Oracle, Apple, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, Uber, Airbnb. I mean, it just goes and goes and goes, and it terminates in this amazing little area in San Francisco, which we're inhabiting now. And I think when we live in it every day, you get kind of immune to it. Um, I, I hope that many of you, like me, are taking notes and writing stuff down, because this stuff is not going to last. Like, you are an amazing, revolutionary moment, and you happen to be uh, practicing a skill that is really the avant-garde of that. Um, if you think about the, the history and evolution of both industries and companies, they tend to start with technology, they compete on technology, and then they ultimately, and then they move up and they start competing on business models, and then a few of them then move up and they start competing on, uh, on experience, what we might call designs. Very similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and individual's uh, development. So we could look at companies or industries that get stuck in technology. Um, you know, search, in, search technology, I think, is still kind of stuck in technology. I don't know stuck's maybe the wrong word. They compete on technology. Right, they compete because they're better on technology. Car industry competed for years on technology, better braking speeds, better horsepower, more safety features, et cetera. At some point, they moved to business models, and that's when you start getting bundles of software. I might argue, with all due respect, Microsoft is sort of stuck uh, mostly competing at the business model. Right? Car industry, again, went through business models when they were talking about leasing, financing models, things like that. And a few companies realized the strategic value of competing at design. Um, Tesla is doing that today. Um, Apple does that. You know, design is not, in my book, as much as I love it, as much as it's financed an amazing life for me and my family. Um, design is not some morally superior way of seeing the world. It is an amazing strategy. You know, and when I, not that he called me at the time, but when Steve came back to Apple, um, it occurred to me that that he thought of design as the way Apple was going to compete uh, in 1996, 1997, because the alternative was to compete on price, and that was a race to the bottom with Dell. Um, and so design ends up being this amazing strategic advantage where you can add more value and you can get more margin and have a much, much healthier business. It's unpredictable, it's challenging, um, but it's a, ultimately, I think, a superior business model for industries and companies that are ready for it. Um, what we heard from the earlier panelists, I think the, there's certain pockets of the enterprise uh, industry have, who have moved to that. But there's other industries and other companies that just haven't gotten to that point in their development yet, but, but the, I think most of them will over time.